the way things are now, really, we're talking about a totally brand new strategy here. We're looking at going forward, just jumping from this country to that country. All it's going to do is buy you a little time. In the long run, which isn't going to be all that long, when you take a look at the fact that this global thing is a, it's on a schedule. It's on a scheduled time agenda. You can see it, how, how it's being done in, in every country. It's going to be done similarly. And the best beach is at the airport, huh? Thanks for coming to our channel. We're back at it again, talking about things most bloggers won't do. All about retire earlier or better at home or abroad. So we've got government scaring us and uh, threatening, and actually much more than that. We'll get to that in a minute. Let me uh, just say we have been abroad 10 years. And uh, incidentally, a lot of people know us for the family that has never paid more than three or four hundred dollars for three and four bedroom houses and apartments furnished both furnished and unfurnished and so when we first set out uh, to to go abroad to retire early because we did live in the states for uh, a few decades uh, doing the retire early life which we call retire early life you know it's the complete opposite of the work a day life you know where you're spending your days uh, putting in your hours and your weeks. You know, the, the retire early lifestyle is going to be the complete opposite of that. The work a day thing is not going to be at the top of the scale or even on the scale at all uh, of priorities. And so however one achieves that is uh, it should be commended and, uh, you know, just uh, admired because let's face it, a lot of people would love to be off the treadmill and a lot of times people put it off and they have different ways, uh, different common ideas on how to do that, which normally just keeps you on that treadmill longer. So we're all about uh, nonconformist. <laughs> nonconformist, retire early, retire better. And one of the ways to do that, which a lot of people have clearly discovered, is to go abroad. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, uh, the majority of people don't really uh, do it properly because they spend too much. <laughs> so anyway. Let's get off that and talk about this this thing here. When we first went abroad, you know, the, the whole idea was that it, it was never, I mean, let me, let me just preface a little bit. It's like when I met this consulting client in Cuenca, Ecuador, and he was asking me some very specific questions. Some of the questions he was asking was along the lines of, uh, in, in general, the big picture of being in a, in a Latin American country and maybe moving all of your money there, which we uh, talked a little bit about in some of the other videos about, you know, people moving all their money to a country and not to pick on. We don't pick on any particular country. We just talk about what happens. And you had these expats that lost all their money. They put their money in the Mexican bank. And it also happened in Ecuador. And people, they put all of their retirement funds in these foreign banks. And he was asking me about that. And one of the things that you look at is that historically, every so many years, every 15, 20 years or so, or, you know, give or take, some of these Latin countries blow up. I mean, you know, you got Venezuela. That's nothing new. Uh, you know, you had uh, uh, Argentina and Ecuador in 2000. You had Chile in the 80s. So it isn't a subject matter that was new or unheard of or un, not understood that something like that might happen when when you go abroad and that's uh, one of the things that we've also discussed is the idea of retire abroad this idea that you're going to and I still see it I still see it every single day people thinking they're gonna just lock stock and barrel I picked my spot you know <clears throat> and, it, and it sounds good it sounds good I found my haven you know I I, this is it. This is where I'm going to be. But it doesn't work that way. But the idea was, the school of thought was, well, so what? So what if one of these countries blows up? You just move to the next one, right? You just go somewhere else. You move. And people are still saying that. Lo and behold, though, 10 years later, we've got this global, and I have to be careful how I, uh, what words I use because 
I don't want my video sandbagged. And uh, and so we've got this thing that uh, is is global. Let me just point out the observation that is important here. Take a look at how things are being done, and they're being done all over the place. Like say in Ecuador, you've got in Ecuador, you've got two or three of the states in Ecuador where a full frontal attack, a full frontal assault has been made by the government. You know, we can call it authoritarianism or other names, whatever you want. We call it whatever you want. That's exactly what happened. But the same thing's happening in Mexico. All right, you've got two or three counties where a full frontal assault is being made. Um, you know, you've got other uh, places. Uh, yeah, I haven't made a list, but when you look at it, you see a very consistent and concerted similar kind of effort. Some people call it test, uh, test states, test counties, whatever that are being that they're doing this to see how what the reaction is and how they're going to respond and all this. So what you're really seeing is is a concerted effort. It's like a war strategy. It really is a very cunning. I call it a cunning chess game, but it can also be called uh, a war strategy. When you take a look at how a aggressive, you know, party makes moves in a war zone, for example, in the news in Afghanistan, they don't just say, "Well, if we can't take it all, we're going to back off." They just go in and, and take what they can take, and they do a full frontal assault. On those areas and then they learn from from what's being done so what I'm saying is that's exactly what happened in Ecuador and what is happening in Mexico and other places around the globe and so that brings me to this that the old way of thinking the old school way of thinking because I've got friends that are even in Chile and uh, the thing about Chile is that it's got I mean it's just it, it's a mess and when you look at some of these places like Chile, it gives you an insight on what the plan is for every country. So you don't have to wait for it to come to your country. You can see what has really happened in what you know how far they will take it in one place, and then you'll know how far they're intending to take it in other places. But the way that this is being done is an incremental fashion so as to keep people off guard as to what's going to happen next and to give you a false sense of security. And so I'm saying that you've got this global frontal assault going on and, you know, it's, it's the furthest thing. I've talked to all my friends that are you know, long time uh, friends that are insightful and have a biblical insight and historical insight. Nobody saw it coming. I mean, we saw the potential for it to come as stated maybe in one area or two areas and gosh you know you go abroad you got just to be on the conservative side you got 200 countries if half of them you know you got to write off for one reason or another that still leaves you 100 countries but the way things are now really we're talking about a totally brand new strategy here we're looking at going forward a total brand new strategy just jumping from this country to that country all it's going to do is buy you a little time in the long run which isn't going to be all that long when you take a look at the fact that this global thing is a, it's on a schedule it's on a scheduled time agenda you can see it how how it's being done in, in every country it's doing being done similarly and so it's a scheduled and timed agenda. And so when you look at the response, uh, you know, we've spent ever since this thing started, we've been warning people. And after we came back from Europe uh, late summer last year, we've been warning everyone in Ecuador about what was happening. And, you know, people didn't take it seriously. And I'm finding the same thing, you know, everywhere that we go or any of the expat groups, people not taking it seriously. And the same thing was happening in Ecuador. Until people's personal seat is on fire, they they won't mobilize. They don't mobilize, and that's one of the strategies that uh, that, that this cabal uses. But I do praise the expats there in Ecuador that finally did. They were a day late and a dollar short. They finally mobilized. But here's my point, and I'm getting to it right now, is that they when they did finally mobilized they did they pooled their resources because I, I don't have all of the skills it takes 
you know, I mean, I have a lot of insight and diligence and gifts, but I don't, I don't have all the skills. But what they did is they pooled their skills, they put together their time and their talent. Uh, you know, they they partnered with other uh, groups in other countries that have had successes, and so they did a really great response. And they went ahead and pushed back and had uh, some small successes, which. I believe going forward, that is going to be what we're going to need to be doing. Besides other things that we need to be doing differently than just being these lone wolves running around. And a lot of people are still, especially Americans, they're very individualistic. They're still not seeing it. And but when you look at the successes, the success that this group, small group of expats, has had in this one particular county or state in Ecuador, but you take a look at the other counties and states in Ecuador where there was not a defense made, that ground has been lost just as you would have lost in a tactical tactical war scenario where if the defense and offensive is not properly organized, you lose the territory. And that's exactly what's happening. We're losing territory all over the globe here. You know, peace and freedom is being lost all over the globe, and this globe, and this requires a different thinking. So I'm making a call specifically, as I have been doing all along, to help people understand that we, you know, I think people know we live in different times, but you know, different times, different strategy. Thanks for listening. Thanks for coming to our channel. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Give me your ideas in the comments. Make a comment anyway, and have a wonderful day.